would your friends describe you in three words? Now, that might sound like the sort of question you'd be asked when you're setting up a dating profile, uh, but it's actually a really good place for me to start because it's a question that I've asked over a thousand students in the last three years when they apply to join our school. And it's a really difficult question because it asks them at a very young age to consider who they are, what makes them them, to really think about their identity. And if we go wider with that question and we take it really massive, then it becomes simply, who are you or who am I? Which is a question that has puzzled philosophers right the way back to the earliest thinkers. Back in ancient Greece, the philosopher Thales said, the most difficult thing in life is to know ourselves. And then Aristotle said that knowing ourselves is the key to all wisdom. And a little bit later, Socrates said something that I think is very important. He said, once we know ourselves, then we can learn to care for ourselves. But otherwise, we never shall. So it's clear that knowing ourselves and considering our identity has always been something to be valued. So I'm going to give you an easier question, perhaps. What one thing would you use to define your identity? Try and think of just one thing that makes you uniquely you. And I'm not going to give you too long to think because the chances are that the very first thing that popped into your head when I just asked that question is the thing you think most defines you. So maybe you thought of a job that you have, so a teacher or a lawyer or a CEO or a mayor. Uh, maybe you thought of a role you fulfill in your personal life, grandfather, husband, mother, daughter, something like that. But probably a lot of you will have gone deeper than that, and you will have thought about an aspect of your personality or something that you believe in, something like, I'm kind or I'm an optimist, or, and this is the one that 70% of girls tell me when I interview them, I'm funny, uh, which I always think is an interesting one because who judges that? Is it them or, or is it somebody else? Well, our... Our identity is something that's really complex. There are a lot of theories out there about not just how it's formed, but exactly who forms it. So if I say that I'm a really generous person, but my friends and family say I'm incredibly stingy and never open my wallet, can I actually say that I have an identity of generosity? Well, I'm not going to attempt to answer the most pivotal philosophical question of the last 3,000 years in the next 10 minutes, but what I am going to do is argue that for teenagers, exploring the concept of identity and actually starting to explore their own sense of self is absolutely crucial for their emotional well-being, and that we as educators have to find more opportunities to allow that to happen. So this is me. Uh, aged 14, and I know, right? Uh, and it was actually 1995, so I was a good 10 years behind the Gothic fashion curve, um, but this was me. And what was absolutely clear from this picture is one thing, I had no style. <laughs> but what I think I did have was the start, the very beginnings of my sense of self and my identity. And I was really lucky because I went to a school with a really, really loose uniform code that allowed me to explore. And I also had parents who actively encouraged me in that exploration. And not just to think about who I was at the time, but thinking about who I wanted to be as an adult. And that meant I started to explore things in my teenage life that led me to be quite confident in looking a bit different. And it meant I was quite a confident adult when I got to adulthood and that my teenage years were relatively problem-free. But I think if you'd asked me at the time how my friends would describe me in three words, I probably would have said that one of them would be weird. And I would have been okay with that because I had quite a strong sense of myself and who I was. Psychologists tend to agree that the ages between 14 and 20 are the most pivotal for development of teen identity. And they also agree that it's very, very important, both as an adolescent and on into adulthood. And that's because studies have shown that teenagers with a self-assured sense of their identity and who they are have a greater psychological well-being. 
But those who have a lesser sense of self and a weaker sense of their identity unfortunately report higher degrees of loneliness, higher levels of substance misuse, increased mental health issues, and also masking of those mental health issues. And the same studies also show that teenagers who are able to consider their identity as one that can change, as one that can evolve and develop and be shaped and reshaped, those are the teenagers with the highest levels of self-esteem and improved academic outcomes. But there is a problem with teenage identity, and that is that teenagers are predisposed to consider that identity not in the way that they see themselves, but in the way that others see them. That's how we get so many teenage fashion trends. It's like a domino effect. So how many teenagers right now own a black cropped puffer jacket, for example? Well, there are two experts on this who were in the 1960s and were very keen to explain and explore why this was. So. You had Charles Cooley, who defined a concept called the looking glass self. And that was where teenagers saw themselves just as a reflection of the views of those around them. And then there was George Mead. And he said identity could be divided up into two. So you have the I and the me, where the I is how I see myself, and the me is how others see me. In other words, a social definition of my identity that so many teenagers seem to judge themselves by. And so if I go back to that question I asked you at the start, I think it's interesting that I used to say when I first started interviewing girls, how would you describe yourself in three words? And actually, the first 20 students I interviewed could barely give me one. So I had to reframe that question and say, how would your friends describe you? But the amazing thing about adolescence is that that is when teenagers are starting to explore their future goals, their future selves. So if you ask a really small child to describe themselves, it's likely they'll say something along the lines of, I'm tall, or I have green eyes, or something really, really concrete about their physical identity. Whereas teenagers will start to question their values and their beliefs. And that's how we end up with teenagers taking so many risks. The most prominent thinker in this area is someone called Eric Erickson, and that's really crucial for what I'm talking about this evening. He said, what teenagers go through is an identity crisis. They are trying to balance exploration of lots of possibilities and commitment to one of those. And I think we can use my gothic fashion sense as an example of that, because having explored <laughs> a very large number of fashion identity possibilities, I then committed, as I'm sure you'll agree quite fully, uh, to this one. And in doing so, I reached what Eric Erickson described as identity achievement, the pinnacle of identity exploration, because I had explored and then I had committed. But where a teenager does lots of exploration but never commits, or where they commit without actually having explored, or worse, if they never explore and also never commit, then that is when some of the typical anxieties and issues of teenage life can arise. Things like bowing to peer pressure, loss of self-belief, excessive risk-taking, and probably the worst one, which is kind of apathy. So if we agree that it's important for teenagers to learn about identity, how do we teach it? Well, I think we have to start with what teenagers already know about themselves, and then we build to a place where they can explore their values, because a value-centered identity is so much more powerful than one that is based on something superficial like fashion sense. I am not stood here today in a long black dress, uh, but I am stood here with some of the values that I developed at the age of 14. So things like the, the values I place on the arts in my life, enjoying spending time with my parents, and also something really critical I discovered at the age of 15, which is that blasting out Alanis Morissette at top volume is a surefire way to happiness for me. So when I was designing a course for our year seven pupils to explore their identity, I started with what they believed in, and I encouraged them to think about big questions. We did start simply. We asked things like, what's your meaning of your name, or what's your favorite food and why? But then we moved on to big questions. What do you value in life? How do you make yourself happy? What importance do you place on money? 
I want our teenagers to think of their identity in terms of their values and their beliefs, and also to know that what they believe may well not be the same as the person sat next to them in class, or even as their best friend. And so a big part of what we have to do is encourage them to express those beliefs. And we designed a room with a speaker's corner podium from which they could extol those values to each other and be confident in what they were saying. Because if, as Socrates believed, we can only truly learn to care for ourselves when we actually know ourselves, then knowledge of ourselves becomes so important for teenagers they need all the self-care they can get as they navigate this hormonally driven confusion and flux of teenage life. And by teaching them identity as a concept, but also through self-exploration, we help them to develop their self-confidence and their self-efficacy. And that can sustain them not just through their teenage years, but on into adulthood. So I ask the educators in the room to consider more ways in which you can encourage teenagers to explore their sense of self. And for everyone in the room to start to think about how you would describe your identity, not in the way, in the way that others would think of you, but in your own view of yourself. It will be unique, it will be the truth, and it will be something that develops your self-confidence. Because only when you truly know that can you learn to care for yourself. Thank you.